Back on the blue turf here in Boise, Idaho, number 23 versus number 21, the Broncos and the Aggies for the Mountain Division Championship here inside Albertson Stadium. Utah State won the toss and has elected to receive as Jalen Green and Savon Scarver drift back deep. Scarver, the leading kick returner in the country, helping lead the charge for this explosive Aggies offense. So glad you could join us tonight for this outstanding matchup between two of the hottest teams in the country. They've won their last 16 games in a row combined, Tom. And away we go from the blue turf here in Idaho. And a fair catch called for. It'll be first and 10 for the Aggies from their 25. Now, so important for these teams to get off to a good start. Utah State has done that and then some this year. One of the top teams in first quarter play this season, led by Jordan Love, who may be the best quarterback in the country that no one knows about. <laughs> Which is remarkable because he has two 500 yard plus games to his resume this year alone and 25 touchdowns, only four interceptions on the year. On first down, quick game as they swing it out in the flats. And a gain of six yards on first down. The reception made by Aaron Vaughns, one of the heroes last week in the comeback win against Colorado State. And here comes this tempo by Utah State. Tom, they'll go as quick as anybody in the nation. Two passes, two catches. That's good enough for a first down. Avery Williams with the stop. But 11 yards on the first two plays as Jalen Green makes the grab. Well, and you see how powerful Jordan Love's arm strength is. He can whip the ball out and he can get it down the field. And right now, Boise State just electing to play a little more pass coverage early on. Winner of this game will battle Fresno State. Hosting the Bulldogs a week from tonight in the Mountain West Championship game. Love with a clean pocket fires a pass that is deflected incomplete. And Evan Tyler was able to get a fingertip on it as they were trying to spot Dax Raymond, the talented tight end. Yeah, Dax Raymond's one of Jordan Love's favorite targets, the tight end, a pro prospect as well. Off play action, they'll swing it out again, and there's a crease near sideline. There goes Bonds. Ushered out inside the 30, the first big play of the night. Tyler credited with a stop. That's a gain of 37. Roy, simple pass concepts, but big yardage as a result. Darwin Thompson in the backfield. Aggies do have a nice one-two punch at running back. Jalen Green makes a man miss and is tripped up short of the 20. So here comes Utah State averaging nearly 51 points per game in their 10-game winning streak. Yeah, the only team outscoring them is Oklahoma this year. Darwin Thompson straight ahead on second down. We'll have enough to pick up another first down. Maeva finally brought him down to the turf. Well, we can see that Utah State is pretty comfortable working the perimeter of this Boise State defense. And of course, Boise State playing without one of their best defenders, Keikoa Nawahine, not playing tonight for Boise State. And Tom, that's an enormous loss for a secondary that has been rock solid this season. That news breaking just moments before we came on the air. Opening possession of this matchup between two top 25 programs. Dax Raymond, your tight end. Love the quick toss to Jordan Nathan. The jump cut and then driven backwards. As Curtis Weaver makes his first tackle of the night. Right, you're going to hear a lot about Curtis Weaver. He's a great edge player. Andy Avalos, a defensive coordinator, telling us earlier tonight they got to play great on the edge, both Weaver and Jabril Frazier. On second down and five. Aggies quick to the line. They'll look to the sideline to get the correct play call. And Jordan Love has the ability to change that call, which he's doing now. And you see he's off to a fast start. That was Bonds in motion. Thompson the carry. Spins his way inside the 10. It'll bring a third down and two. Line. 
only loss this season for Utah State back in week one at Michigan State. And that was a touchdown contest. And Roy, you know I've talked about it all year long. We had Utah State early in the year. They are a hot team, one of the nation's hottest, and not a lot of teams want to play them right now. And you can see why. Love wants the back shoulder fade. End zone. Touchdown Aggies and Jalen Green, who was one time committed to Boise State, reaches pay dirt as Utah State strikes first. Again, the arm strength of Jordan Love firing at Jalen Green, who, yes, was once a Boise State commit, ended up at USC. A great catch on that back shoulder throw by Jordan Love. And just remarkable how they move down the field. They work the perimeter of the defense. They still mix in some run game. And, of course, their offensive coordinator, David Yost, having worked under the great Mike Leach, has air raid concepts in this offense. And... It's a lot of Matt Wells offense too. The old Utah State just get it down the field. Extra point is good. Aggies on the scoreboard early. <laughs> 75 yards in nine plays for Utah State on the road on the opening possession of this football game with Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott. Edward Ashoff joins us now from the sidelines and Jordan Love, Edward off to a very fast start tonight. Yeah, I talked to him earlier this week, and talk about a guy who's cool and collected. I asked him about that game-winning drive that he had against Colorado State last week, under a minute to go, and he was just like, oh, yeah, two-minute drill. It was easier than what we do in practice, and Matt Wells, a head coach before the game, said one minute, 36 seconds, looked at his offense, and the offensive line laughed and said, oh, this is way easier than what we do, and Jordan is the reason why. This is a guy who does not flinch. Blue Turf does not intimidate him. Killian Butler brought down short of the 20 and Matt Wells is an interesting coach in his sixth season in Logan he told us this week I look at this game tonight as round eight of Mountain West Conference play and in other words he views it as just another game when really it is anything but with a chance to clinch an appearance in the Mountain West championship game next week winner take all tonight and, and really winner gets to go to the Mountain West Conference championship and be the host so that's where this game becomes pivotal for these two teams. Our first look at Brett Rippon, the senior quarterback from Spokane, Washington, and the all-time leading passer in Mountain West Conference history as Alexander Madison, punishing run, ushered out short of the 25 with a penalty flag on the field. Cameron Haney with the tackle. Scott Campbell, our official tonight. 86 offense 10 yard penalty from the previous spot still first down Chase Blakely fifth year senior tied in on senior night Correction, that penalty. Penalty. We have the distance. well you mentioned Brett Rippon a moment ago Roy and just his yards completion percentage that he's put up 36 career wins. I think that's pretty impressive in Mountain West Conference history. The number one player, Andy Dalton, who's now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Elite company for sure. So after the penalty, it'll be first in 19. Rippon with a clean pocket. Rips it across the middle, and it's incomplete. John Bates, the intended receiver. And he dropped that one in this cold weather. That's one he'd love to have back. <laughs> Little cool tonight, but Rippon right on target. Zach Hill, the offensive coordinator, saying he wanted to get Brett Rippon started early and often, but give him some easy throws. I don't know how easy a seam route is down the middle to your tight end, but he put it right on Bates's hands. Should have been caught. Well, it's been a crazy weekend of college football so far. Michigan went down day to Ohio State. Second loss of the season for the Wolverines. Here's Rippon. C.T. Thomas, arguably the best hands on the team, dances out near the 20. We saw Washington beat Washington State yesterday in the Apple Cup. So the Cougars now eliminated from playoff consideration. That's a gain of 11. And Notre Dame right now being tested at Southern California over on ABC. Yeah, this is a great week of college football. Of course, next week as well. Boise State on third down, second in the country in conversion percentage at 55%. Only Army 
is better on third down. Broncos need eight here. Rip it. Flush. Delivers. Sean Monster, first catch of the night. He'll be dropped after a gain of one by John Trell Rockamore. And Rockamore rocks him right to that blue turf. Punt team on the field for Boise State. Rockamore, the fifth year senior, one of the heroes of last week's victory over Colorado State. He had a pick six interception and just playing so well for that defense of Keith Patterson's. And they run to the ball. Man, are they fast. And how about this start by the Aggies? Boise State three and out after a Utah State 75-yard scoring drive. Pressure on Quinn Skillen as Nathan corrals it and is promptly dropped inside his own 35. After a punt of 40 yards, Utah State takes over 7-0. Aggies out in front. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Senior night on the blue turf. Jabril Frazier, Tyler Horton, and Brett Rippon all being honored shortly before kickoff. 18 seniors in all being recognized here this evening. Tom Ramsey, Edward Ashoff, Roy Philpott. Inside Albertson Stadium, what's been a wacky weekend of college football and a fast start for the Aggies in this winner take all Mountain Division championship game inside the Mountain West Conference. Winner of this one hosts Fresno State a week from tonight for the title in this league. And Jordan Love, Tom, six for his first seven. He's been impressive. He really has, and he got it to different receivers. Of course, the touchdown throw to Jalen Green on that first drive. The late handoff. Right through the A-gap, a gain of not call it 10. That's going to be enough to move the chains. Darwin Thompson, part of that one-two punch in the backfield. And, Roy, usually teams run to set up the pass. Utah State passing first, setting up the run. RPO Love hits the blue turf. Boise State trying to catch its breath as you take a look at Love's numbers. Very impressive. You know, they came out throwing, and... and through some swing passes and just really worked that perimeter of the Boise State defense. Great energy here in Boise tonight. Back shoulder toss to Green, sails out of bounds. An important third down now for the Broncos offense, or defense, excuse me. It is tough. They got to get off the field tonight. Boise State, they wanted to start fast and going out early not getting enough first downs. I mean, all of a sudden, you put a little more pressure on that Boise State defense. I think, again, the edge rushers, Weaver, Curtis Weaver, number 99, has to come up big tonight. Broncos with 36 sacks this season. Utah State has yielded just seven. Ronquavian Tarver makes the grab, but well short of the line he needed a game. Evan Tyler in coverage, pickup of five. And the punt team on the field for the Yankees. Big stop for the Boise State defense. Sure was. Yeah, they rushed four, had a little pressure in Jordan Love's face, and now they get to flip the field with a punt. And, you know, again, special teams play such an important role in all these games. Taylor Heights. Spins it to Avery Williams with a fair catch at the 12. Fair catch is called for the 12 After a punt of 39, Broncos will take over. So you saw Brett Rippon there on that first possession. It was three and out. Anything Brian Harson and Zach Hill need to change here early. Yeah, you, you know, Roy, it's interesting. You know, senior night, we've talked about this. A lot of teams going through senior night this time of year, and it's an emotional deal. But the seniors that Boise State has, they've been part of so many great wins. And I just think, you know, the Mountain West Conference the last few years, you've either had to go through Boise State or San Diego State. And this year, Utah State is battling Boise State for the right to represent the Mountain Division. That was Blakely in motion. Play action for Ripon. In comes the pressure, and down he goes. Inside the one-yard line, Caden Anderson, his first the sack of the season, and it's a big Caden one. Anderson. Sure is. Great pass rush that time by Caden Anderson. Just leverages the guard. 
Took it out of the and three. The guard just missed it. A redshirt sophomore from Logan, Utah. After a loss of nine. Rippin from his own end zone. Fires a pass. Monster has it. Makes a move. Ushered out short of the 20. It'll bring up third down and manageable for Boise State. Aaron Wade was ready and waiting as best as he could there. And Cameron Haney getting the start. Deontay Fortenberry out with an injury for the remainder of the season. And that's a big loss for Utah State's defense. Hey, injuries a big factor across college football this time of year. We're seeing it just about everywhere today. On third down, Broncos need five. Aggies showing pressure, ripping with time, sails it incomplete. And the pass was high, looking for C.T. Thomas. Cameron Haney in coverage and did a nice job. Utah State elected to rush six that time, and Utah State playing man free, so coming after Rippin and yeah. Brian Harson asking him what he saw, and it's just man free okay, coverage. Your guy has to get separation if you hope to complete that ball. Consecutive three and outs for the Broncos offense. Quinn Skillen hits it from his own six. And a beautiful punt turns over to Jordan Nathan and waits for the fair catch. The Broncos will do their best to flip the field in our third look now at Jordan Love. Yeah, two, three and outs. You don't hear that often with Boise State, especially at the start of a game. But Skillen, boy, what an athlete he is. He they've used him at wide receiver in the past and even thought about playing him. After a punt of 50 yards. The Aggies from their 33. And we welcome you to Boise, Idaho, here on the blue turf in this winner-take-all Mountain Division contest. Winner will host Fresno State in the Mountain West Conference Championship game one week from tonight. And the Utah State Aggies off and running with a 7-0 advantage away from home. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, Edward Ashoff. The Aggies scored on their opening possession. Boise State has gone three and out twice. Chilly night, as you would expect, here in Boise, Idaho. What has been another chaotic weekend of college football. Clemson finding a way to get the job done against South Carolina. First and ten for the Aggies here. Utah State possessing one of the top offenses in all of college football. Aggies have won their last ten as Tarver sees that pass broken up by Tyler Horton. Now Jordan Love impressive. There's his first scoring strike of the night. Yeah, six of seven on that first drive. And the touchdown going to Jalen Green. They just moved right down the field. Nine plays, 75 yards. Love with a clean pocket. Fires a pass and it's going to be picked off. The Boise State defense comes up huge as Jordan Love commits a rare mistake. His fifth interception of this season. And the Broncos take over in Utah State territory. Caneo with the pick, and Tom, that's his third of the season for the sophomore from Hawaii. Kekaula Caneo just gets in the flat, and he ends up, he just runs zone, he breaks on the ball, and makes a one-handed catch. How about that? Kanehu, Kanejo, a little extra pressure tonight with Nawahine out, and... Boy, I tell you, the Kahuku Red Raiders are proud of that young man. From the 39, an opportunity now for Boise State. Ripping. Surveys. Flings it deep. They'll take a shot. Richardson. In zone, and it's broken up. DJ Williams in coverage. And he did his best there to prevent the touchdown. Well, DJ Williams, arguably the best cover corner for Utah State. Stride for stride with Richardson. That's just a great job getting the, his hand on the ball and 
Rippon's a little bummed there. Brett Rippon, the nation's leading active passer, coming into this football game tonight. We talked to the Utah State players and coaches this week. They'll tell you they feel like he's been playing here for 17 years. <laughs> Quickly out in the flats. And a gain of four will make it third down and six as C.T. Thomas makes his second grab. I believe Monster caught that. Monster having a big game a week ago with three touchdowns. On third down, another big play for this Boise State offense. Approaching five to play in the first quarter. Empty backfield. They'll set up the tunnel screen. And a nifty move to the outside. Butler picks up the first down. And a gain of 10 yards. First reception for a Killian Butler. It's 24th of the season. Well, Monster, who caught that last pass, he gets the block out in front on that. And that just springs the receiver. That's This is a great throw and catch. Really nice running by Butler. First down, Boise State out of the pistol. And the give straight ahead to Andrew Van Buren. First carry of the night for the freshman from West Hills, California. Well, Al Alexander Madison does not come out of the game often. And when he does, Van Buren gives him a little spell. I believe Madison's back in the ball game. I'm not it, taking Alexander Madison out too often, right? No, he has played spectacular the last four games, Roy, over 514 yards rushing. Madison checks back in on second down. It's Boise State team methodically improving as the season has progressed all the way to this six-game winning streak. Madison makes a cut and a man miss. It'll be third down and short. Well, you bring up a great point. They have improved, and Brian Harson told me before the game, he said the offensive line has really been the catalyst there in, in that improvement of the offensive numbers, and especially the last three weeks alone, while Rippon hasn't thrown for over 300 yards in any of the last three games, they have effectively rushed the ball. They've been really good on third down, and they've played great defense, too. Madison back-to-back 1,000-yard -back campaigns. Power formation. Madison gets the carry. That's a first down. Madison towards the end zone. It'll be first and goal for the Broncos. Gage Ferguson finally tripped him up. Madison just following great blocks that time. They run a wing with the tight ends, and it's just down, down block, and guard pulls around, and Madison just with great vision that time and athleticism, and Almost getting over for the score. After the interception, a nice response for the Broncos offense. One wide receiver formation. Madison, in zone. Touchdown, Boise State. Fourteenth rushing touchdown of the season for the junior from California. Again, that offensive line gets great push at the line of scrimmage. They have a little action in the backfield, just trying to fool some of the Utah State Aggies' eyes. And again, Madison powering over and getting six points for Boise State. Offensive play caller Zach Hill told us this week, he's quiet, he's humble, but he's hungry. And he's been running extremely hard these last three football games. Hayden Hogarth, an opportunity to try to tie this one up early. And the kick is good. 2.35 remaining in our first quarter. And our new score, we are tied at seven on the blue turf. A great one brewing in the Mountain West Conference tied at seven. 235 remaining in our first quarter as we take a look at how both teams are planning for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual first for the Broncos. Well, I think Brian Harson and Boise State did just that. Start fast, although they didn't really start fast. They went two, three and outs, but they got on the board. They responded, moving the chains, keeping momentum. That's Boise State football. And of course, 
protecting the football. Let the other team make the mistakes. Scarver waves for the fair catch. They'll move it out to the 25 yard line. And for the Aggies from Logan, Utah. Good start tonight, and especially for Jordan Love. As we take a look at how the Aggies are planning for success, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And we talk about their up tempo offense, having that continuity rhythm on the offensive side of the ball. I think running the ball, Roy, really becomes really important. And I always say, you got to keep one eye on the clock when you're playing Boise State because the fourth quarter can sneak around pretty quick and you want to you want to be ahead or even with them as you approach that fourth quarter because they're they're awfully tough on the blue. The best winning percentage in college football here on the blue turf they'll fake the reverse flag on the field. Bright somehow keeps it alive and sit out of bounds hard inside the 20 and there's another flag. A lot happening on that play for the Aggies, but at the end of the night, they move backwards. Well, Tyson Maeva was all over that play from the get-go. Scott Campbell leading our Mountain West officiating crew this evening. There are two fouls on the play by both teams. Holding number 51, offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 58, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. So Maeva, Maeva, they go through the uh, sideline barrier, and then Quinn Ficklin, Quinn Ficklin to center, gets a takedown. Well, you think about it, the end result plus five yards and an automatic first down on a play that should have lost about 10 yeah. for the Aggies. And the first down carry by Bright goes nowhere. Ezekiel Noah belted him down. No gain. Yeah, Maeva would tell you, you know, hey, he was just continuing the play and just drove the, the back out of bounds, which I, I didn't know it was worthy of a flag. Clean pocket for Love off his back foot. Tarver. Could not corral it, and Tyler Horton, the senior, helped break it up. Well, that Boise State front, Roy, they have to get Jordan Love off his spot because if he settles in and has ample time to throw, he can really gouge a defense. His arm strength is, is one of the best in the country, and he's had such a phenomenal year throwing for almost 3,000 yards and 25 touchdowns. Crowd on its feet once more. Well, they got zoned the last time in coverage when Conejo made the interception. Love flings it. Green incomplete. And Love a bit off target. Was knocked down to the blue turf in the process. And the punt team trots on the field again for the Aggies. Well, Jabril Frazier coming in off the edge. And it becomes unsettling with number eight. Gets some running shots at you. There's a whole host of Broncos back there with Jordan Love. So Natane Louie shoved him down. And the Broncos now storming back, hoping for good field position. Taylor Heinz is punt. Williams. Now he's explosive, but this time is bottled up after a 47-yard punt. Tied at 7, 96 seconds remaining in a fast-moving first quarter here in the Gym State. Make sure you kick off your Week 12 NFL Sunday with ESPN. At 10 a.m. Eastern, NFL Countdown returns. Sam and the guys will have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, previews, and much more. And, of course, also on the ESPN app, so you can watch it anywhere. So many people still talking about that Monday night matchup between the Chiefs and the Rams, and it felt like one of these games you see in the Big 12, like last night, WVU right. in Oklahoma. Right, wasn't that? That was a great Monday night game. Boy, they had fun with it. All the players, I mean, you talk about a game that overperformed, right? Who would have anticipated that shootout? Well, most of us did. On first down, Rippin gets it back, wide open, Monster inside the 30, he's brought down there. 
A big play for the Boise State offense. D.J. Williams brought him down, but not before he picked up 51. Again, it's the play action, Roy, and the fake. The ball fake by Brett Rippon, and then he just uncorks one down the middle of the field. Monster streaking, and they're lucky that ball was just a little bit underthrown. Otherwise, he takes that one to the house. And you test this Utah State secondary. You better know what you're doing. They lead the country with 18 interceptions this season. Broncos now at the Utah State 25. A little misdirection. A hurdle. And how about Alexander Madison sent out near the 10. Boy, he can do a little bit of everything. We've seen the power. There's the speed and athleticism. You think Saquon Barkley has an effect on running backs? And to make running backs even greater than they are, I mean, that, that is impressive right there. I mean, full speed. A defender's lowering his shoulders, and you just hurdle him like it's a 330 low hurdle. Bam. DJ Williams. He's jumped over right there relatively easily by 22 in blue. They'll fake it his direction this time towards the end zone, and Richardson could not bring it in. Aaron Wade in coverage. That could have been six. Second and 10 from the 13. This game moving at a breakneck pace here in our first quarter. Well, I love Brett Rippon, his veteran presence, Roy, and the ball faking. He's really freezing the linebackers, and they're trying to go play action and get the ball over the second level defender and those linebackers have to respect Alexander Madison and monster bottom of the screen has been dangerous in this position before but so is 22 as Madison stripped up what could be the final play of these first 15 minutes well Boise State's two tackles have played phenomenal John Ojuku and Ezra Cleveland, I, I think they're two of the best in the game right now. Cleveland's playing at such a high level. The end, first quarter. It's one of the biggest games the in the history of the Mountain West Conference. And after the first quarter, we are tied at seven here in Boise. You're watching college football on ESPN, brought to you by Geico. Here in the city of trees, Boise, Idaho, start of our second quarter. This de facto championship game in the Mountain Division of the Mountain West Conference. Tom Ramsey, Edward Ashoff, Roy Philpott, third and four coming up for Boise State. Broncos need to take it to the two-yard line. And Alexander Madison right at the top of your screen. In motion, ripping, surveying with all kinds of time. Tosses towards the end zone, and that one sails high. Madison was over there. Outstanding coverage by Utah State and Devon Anderson applying the pressure finally against Rippon. Great defense that time by Utah State. They were able to pressure Rippon, and then it looked as though Boise State tried to get a little bit of trickeration going just with the motion of Madison. I'm not sure if they were trying to get him the ball. I thought they were trying to work one of the tight ends over the middle, but either way, the ball sails out of bounds incomplete. A 23 yard effort for Hayden Hogarth. And from the right hash, a chip shot is good. So the Broncos grab their first lead, 10 to 7, just underway here in our second quarter. Hard to believe it's right around the corner. Next Sunday, December 2nd, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff semifinal matchups. Capital One Orange Bowl, the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, headed your way at the end of next month on December 29th. Reese Davis and company will break down all the other big bowl games and add the final top 25 rankings in a four-hour spectacular. It all starts at noon Eastern on ESPN, also the ESPN app, the selection show presented by AT&T here in Boise, Idaho. Albertson Stadium is rocking for this Mountain Division clash inside the Mountain West Conference. We check in for the first time tonight with our good friend Adnan Berg. Adnan.
Oh, we love that. The chaos. Where has it been so far this year? Perhaps it's yet to come. We'll see what happens in the Coliseum as well. Handoff. As Jordan Love trots back on the field. And the Aggies trailing tonight. And during this 10-game winning streak, boy, that is a rare notion for this club. Pretty impressive. Yeah. No, that's not <laughs> 600 minutes. And, and you trail for 12. After a three-yard gain by Darwin Thompson, Jordan Love got off to a fast start, six for his first seven since in just two in his last seven passing attempts. Love off the back foot, fires a strike. Pass is caught by D.J. Nelson. Maeva with the tackle. Third and short. Using tempo right away, trying to rush that Boise State defensive alignment. Offensive play caller David Yost told us this year, Jordan Love really does have a lot of control at the line of scrimmage with the play call. And he's just a redshirt sophomore. And his best football still well in front of him. He really has a great feel for that offense. They need less than a yard here. Pass is deflected and incomplete. Savon Scarver, the receiver. Avery Williams, the outstanding cover corner, broke it up. Avery Ru Williams is really good, Roy. And, and, you know, right there, you're kind of going into the teeth of the defense. You're going against a veteran corner. He's played a lot of snaps. He's played in a lot of big games. And, you know, right there, he just pattern reads it, and sticks his arm in and knocks, swats the ball away. Williams now back deep to receive this punt from Taylor Heinz. And it's a fake to the up back. Needed to cross the 35. He did not get there. And the Broncos defense holds. That snap went straight to Dax Raymond. Matt Wells rolling the dice early in this one, and that one's going to hurt. Well, I was going to say, on, on third down and a foot, you, you know, that's the time when you run the ball. And this time, fourth and a foot. Boise State stones him on the fake. Direct snap, as you mentioned, to Dax Raymond at the tight end, and he just goes nowhere. In fact, he lost a yard. You surprised with that call? I am. Juncture? Yep, I am. This early in the game, and, you, you know, I think you flip the field, you put your defense back on, especially after just blowing it on third and short. Madison already off to a fast start tonight. Another punishing run inside the 30. This game started, it was all Aggies right down the field as a flag is out at the 25. And then since then, Boise State has seized control after that interception by Jordan Love. Sort out the flag here. After the play was over, personal foul, number 77, offense. 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. The down count, second down. It's the starting left guard, John Molchon. Redshirt Jr. out of Las Vegas. That's a costly penalty. And Molchon gets the flag. And Roy, I am surprised, you know, but Matt Wells told us this week, you know, he's he's going to be himself. He's going to. You know, not change anything going in. And so, I mean, when you think about taking chances like that, you got to take chances in big games. There goes Madison off the right side. He'll get some of that penalty yardage back. Ahead to the 36. Chase Christiansen brought him to the turf. you got to believe in your defense heavily, and they do. Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator, really has done a great job. You mentioned the interceptions this year, 18 leading the nation and of those 18 six were defensive touchdowns and they had two last week against Colorado State that really turned the entire outcome of the game a miracle comeback victory in Fort Collins keeping that 10 game win streak intact Broncos need 12 here ripping down the field caught first down Boise State A.J. Richardson, another huge catch. And a gain of 18. Well, they love Richardson. He's a good route runner. And just working again, Jackson the corner. And 
That, again, just veteran receiver against a young redshirt freshman, and I'll take number seven any time. Broncos on the move again. Winner of this game will host the Mountain West Conference Championship game next week. Big collision at the line. David Woodward, leading tackler for the Aggies, brings down Madison. There is a flag on the field. Two sides getting a little chippy in the last five or ten minutes. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number 67, offense, 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. The down counts, second down. Garrett Larson, the starting center. Two costly penalties on the Boise State offensive line. Yeah, sure enough, he drills Woodward after the whistle blew. That's why the flag came out. And boy, as much as we propped up that Boise State offensive line on the drive before, two costly penalties alone on this drive. It's a packed house here tonight. Second and 24 after the infraction. <laughs> Play action for Rippon. Pressure off the edge. Steps up. Wide open. That'll be a first down. It'll be first and goal as John Bates, the tight end, makes the grab. It's a gain of 30. Well, a lot of 12 personnel tonight. One back, two tight ends, two receivers, and they slip Bates around the formation, Roy. Just very strategic play that time by Boise State and just running a little bit of a wheel route and Rippon again with his accuracy puts it right on right between the eight and the five of Bates. Timeout, Boise State, first of the half, timeout on the field. Timeout as we step aside, Boise State with the lead and threatening. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Jiffy Lou. You can do more in a Jiffy. Now the Broncos football players singing and serving at Boise Rescue Mission's annual Thanksgiving dinner. Brian Harson and company, along with Curtis Weaver, doing their very best to help those that are less privileged. Here in the Gem State, second quarter action, 10 to 7. Broncos out in front, Tom Ramsey, Edward Ashoff, Roy Philpock. Great to have you with us tonight. Another sensational weekend of college football almost in the books, including this matchup here. First and goal. Madison already with one touchdown this evening. Stacked up here and driven backwards. No gain on the play. And John Trail Rockamore, one of the best names in college football, led the charge. <laughs> Well, they just clog up the hole that time. Utah State with a lot of hats around the football. And you got to believe that Boise State, they did a great job in their last drive play actioning to Alexander Madison. But, you know, when you get this close to pay dirt and you have such a great back, why not run Wildcat? And Madison steps in to do exactly that. Aggies are going to call a timeout in response. Timeout. First half. The field. 10-12 remaining here in our first half as we check in with Adnan Verk back in the studio once again. It's time for the Boise Office Equipment Coffee Erase. Choose your cup and cheer it on to the finish line. Yeah, win tonight, no doubt about it. The Fighting Irish are going to be there for the first time in school history. And Ian Book has really turned a lot of heads this year. Started the season as a backup. Now basically leads the country in completion percentage. Yeah, there's a lot of impressive quarterback play across the country. Ian Book being one of them. Tua, Tunga Vailoa being another one. Trevor Lawrence being another one. Hey, did you see the knee brace come off of Tunga Bailoa today? Yeah, yes, I did. And a big I, saw, deal. I saw him running as fast as I've ever seen him run. And I mean, well, I thought Jalen Hurts was a great runner, but uh, Tunga Bailoa is impressive. Looked as if that kind of gave him some more freedom of movement in that knee. And if he's able to run the football in the upcoming playoff, assuming the Crimson Tide beat Georgia next week in the SEC championship game, 
That's another weapon that is so hard to account for yeah. if you're an opposing defensive play caller. Yeah, we always talk about that. You know, the quarterback in the run game, and I think Jordan Love for Utah State can be a very effective runner tonight as well in this big game because the defense has to account for all those facets of the offense. And, you know, Brett Rippon, you're not going to see him run a lot. It's interesting that Boise State just lined up in Wildcats, so they put Madison in at quarterback. Utah State calling a timeout, making see if they make the adjustment. We'll see if Boise State sticks with their plan. A chess match ensuing between, between these two great coaching staffs. Ripping back on the field and under center at least to start. And a flag on the field in the end zone. Illegal substitution, 12 on defense, half the distance to the goal, still second down. That'll move it inside the two. Well, my question is this, how, how do you make that mistake coming out of a timeout? That's a big oops right there. D.J. Williams quickly runs off the turf. The Broncos get a free yard. And here's Madison, the hammer to the end zone for the touchdown. Second score of the night for the junior running back already. Over a thousand yards this year. Well, Roy, he's been so impressive. Again, they run right behind Ezra Cleveland, the big left tackle. And, and why wouldn't she? He just knocks people out of the way, and then they pull the guard around as well. Cavedo, the big right guard. Boy, they get it done in the run game. So the Aggies have won 10 in a row before tonight. Boise State, six in a row. And now the Broncos with a 10-point lead. 10.09 remaining here in our first half. Broncos with 17 unanswered. And John Bates, an enormous play on second and 24 moments ago. Well, the play that got Boise State down. They take two receivers, they run them across the field, Roy, and then Bates is a tight end. They run a wheel route, and the ball is delivered perfectly after play action to Alexander Madison. Boy, talking about clearing people out, opening up a huge opportunity down the field, and John Bates catching a dart again by Brett Rippon. Nation's leading kick returner, Savon Scarver, kneels down. It'll be first and 10 from the 25 as we take a look at our playoff rankings presented by Capital One. And the big surprise today, Michigan going down hard in Columbus. Washington State also eliminated from playoff consideration with a loss last night in the Apple Cup. I had moved Ohio State down, as everyone did, after, of course, their loss. You know, and, you know, all of a sudden they knock off Michigan. Really? I mean, they throttle them. And I know that's a tough loss for Michigan. Washington State, of course, losing to their rival, Washington. And, it, you know, a lot changes. I think Georgia moves up quite a bit there, Roy. Well, the Buckeyes will get Northwestern in the Big Ten championship game next weekend. And the comparisons are already out there. If Alabama beats Georgia, will you have two teams going head-to-head -head for that final spot? Ohio State and Oklahoma. So let the debate begin early, yeah. even though it could obviously still change with the games to come. And OU will get Texas as Darwin Thompson picks up a couple. It'll be third down for the Aggies. Oklahoma just, you know, they keep winning. I know they, they left they, the scoring in that Oklahoma-West Virginia game. That was remarkable. It's like a pinball machine. It's basketball on turf. Utah State one for four on third down. Make it two for five as Jalen Green comes up with another big play. A well, nice, really a nice opportunity and target there for Jalen Green. And Jordan Love was a little more patient with the ball that time and waited for the play to develop. The Aggies put so much pressure on their defensive play calls right back at the line of scrimmage as soon as the ball is spotted. Yeah, they really make you show your hand on defense. They, you know, if we're going to give you this formation, how are you going to play us? And then Jordan Love can dial up the play, and a lot of times it's RPO. With Thompson in the backfield across the middle, 
Aaron Vaughn's another huge play for Utah State as he rumbles into Boise State territory. Jordan Happel brought him down after a gain of 19. Well, they got it a little cute on their last series, of course, when they missed it play on third down and they went for the fake on fourth down. And the RPO on Quavian Tarver, who's been awfully quiet so far tonight. Picks up seven on first down. And, and Tarver's a matchup problem for so many teams and, and for Boise State as well. 6'3", 215 pounder. You got to know where he's at. More tempo. Handoff. Thompson to the edge. Another hurdle. Stays in bounds and finally tripped up inside the 20. Gain of 18 yards and the Aggies offense catching fire. Beautiful running that time by Darwin Thompson. Just letting his block set up and being patient. He had a hurdle as well. Love in the flats to Vaughn. Makes a man miss. Ushered out inside the 15. Boy, this defense without a chance to catch its breath, much less the announcers here in the booth. And Roy, what I like about those receivers at Utah State, they block for one another. And selfless team. Thompson drops it. Third down and four, halfway through our second quarter. Crowd rises to its feet once again. Aaron Vaughn's number 11. Keep an eye on him. He's in the slot up top. And he can be awfully effective down here in the red zone. Love looks his direction now the other way towards the end zone. There's Tarver. And the jump ball receiver reels it in for a touchdown. Well, there's the matchup probably we were talking about. Ronquavian Tarver, 6-3, going over Jalen Walker, about 5-11. He might have gotten away with a little bit of a push there. This is a great view, ground level. And Tarver has caught a few of those this year. That's number seven on the year for Tarver. And I just think number one is just such a good player. Outstanding weapons for both of these teams here tonight. We thought it may be a shootout. We knew it would be close. And that's exactly what we've seen so far. Well, and here's where Utah State's so good, right? Nine plays, 75 yards, 235 off the clock. So they're getting back into their, their DNA, which is score quick, early and often. And, you know, a series ago when they went after the fake punt that you know we kind of I kind of scratched my head on that one just because they're so good Roy at driving the ball down the field. Well this season Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like those here at Boise State with their mascot Buster Bronco by awarding the best student section of the year go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school can compete. A great crowd on hand here tonight is what you would expect for a game of this magnitude. Tom, it's the first battle of top 25 teams in the Mountain West since 2010. The student section, they've been rowdy tonight. How about this? Both head coaches this week giving props to Commissioner Craig Thompson. They're, hey, Commish, nice job scheduling the way you did. Utah State, Boise State for the Mountain Division and the representative for next week's championship. Now the Broncos have won the title three of the last six years as Butler is escorted out of bounds. Right at the 26 yard line. Boise State won it last year over Fresno State of course. We could see that same matchup at the Broncos hold serve here at home tonight and Brian Harson, What job he's done in his fifth season. Business as usual here on the blue turf. Yeah, you know, I, he said something to us this week, Roy, and I loved it. You know, the, the players were not in school this week. So he said time plus focus squared equals superior preparation. And I, I thought that was interesting, but he said, you know, we have to have that sense of urgency and intensity throughout the week and prepare for this level of game. And the zone read to Madison. And what a season he has had so far. Edward Ashoff on the sidelines with more. Yeah, guys, Madison is a guy who is in a dual immersion program. He grew up 
in San Bernardino, California. And gang violence around him, not the best situation for him growing up. And his parents decided, look, we want to get you away from this. So they enrolled him in a school away from where he grew up so that he could uh, do a program where he learned all of his subjects in Spanish. Delay a game. Number did it 94. through high school. Defense. Still doing it now. Abrupt movement to cause the offense to fall start. Five yard penalty. Second down. And the Broncos will pick up five yards. Madison tonight to that point, 61 yards on 11 carries. Correction. That penalty yardage is enough for a first down. And that'll move the sticks. Preseason all Mountain West Conference performer back in the summer, Tom, and back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. A lot of numbers, but the guy produces that. Yeah, and, and they've, they've really done a great job producing 1,000-yard rushers in this program, but Madison is really, he took it to the next level last year and this year. He's, he's really been the consummate teammate Quick toss for Rippon. And sent out of bounds, crossing the 40, a gain of five. As Butler makes his second catch of the night. You know, Roy, Brian Harson's done such a great job. You know, they they put up tons of points up here in the blue, but that list of, of great rushers that Boise State has had, I mean, it's, a, it's got a little bit of a who's who list. We'll get to that in a moment. On second down, Rippin pressured, and down he goes back at the 36. That'll force a third down and long. David Woodward shot out of a cannon, brought him to the turf. How about Woodward leading the Mountain West Conference in tackles, and he only had 20 tackles a week ago against the Rams in Fort Collins. That's getting the job done. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, they were like, how many number nines do you have? Right? College football always has duplicate numbers. No, we just have one number nine on defense. Yeah, as a former high school running back, and free safety moved inside this year. It has paid dividends. Third down. Rip it. Flag on the field. And delivers a pass incomplete. Check the penalty in the area of holding. Holding. Number 79. Offense, that penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now, Tipa Naliai getting pressure on Rip in the TCU transfer, and he has been a one man wrecking crew at times this year for Utah State. First time tonight we've called his name. Yeah, K Kadevo with the hold there, but boy, I tell you, Naliai, he's a tough, he's a tough out. He is a tough out. They only rushed three, too, that time. Quinn Skillen. Hit this punt from his own 25. Nathan lost the handle on it for a moment, now waiting for the convoy. And there goes Jordan Nathan. Steps out at the 35. Well, a lot happening there. And after a 53-yard punt, Aggies will have good field position. After a nice return by Jordan Nathan, 509 remaining here in our first half. Don't forget you can stream college football all season long on ESPN Plus. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or by visiting ESPNplus.com. After a punt return of 22 yards, Tyson Maeva. Hit the blue turf hard moments ago. A big block by D.J. Nelson to spring Jordan Nathan. A play that could have ended in disaster for the Aggies. Play action for Jordan Love. Jalen Green, the transfer from SC, has spun around after a short gain of three. Green, one of those players that Matt Wells told us this week, we got to get the football in his hands more. Yeah, he's a good playmaker for them. He, great athleticism. Jordan Love again working the outside perimeter. And a quick toss. Nathan, who had the punt return moments ago, picks up a first down. Tyler Horton with a stop as he shoved him out. Jordan Nathan's been banged up a little bit. Missed the game at CSU a week ago. Back in the lineup tonight. Aggies with tempo once more, setting up the screen for Tarver ahead to midfield. 
A gain of one on the play. Blake Whitlock belted him down quickly. What kind of strain does this put on the defense? We mentioned the play calling, but for these players, they can become winded in a hurry, right? Well, and, and Boise State's trying to sub out right now, Roy, and, and it has a huge impact on them. Just, I mean, we've seen them bent over and winded tonight, and Boise State's, they're, they're pretty good shape. Love wants to go deep, flings it across the middle, passes, incomplete, and almost picked off. Jordan Nathan crossing the middle of the field was covered by Tarek Jones. And the ball just goes right through his hands. Big play for both sides. Ball at midfield. Aggies need nine to keep the drive alive. And Love will fling it. Incomplete. And Jordan Love hit the turf once again. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what they were trying to get done. Louie there to put the hit and the pressure on Love, but they ran. They had a four receiver route and they ran everyone off deep. And then it looked as though one, they were trying to get a deep comeback out to the near side and just Love never having the time to throw. Heinz. Sends this one high and short. And the Broncos will take over. 3.38 remaining in our first half. Adnan Burke has more. Well, I tell you this, Jimbo Fisher has done a really nice job remolding and rebranding that Aggies football team. It's going to take some time to get where to where they want to go. But you can see the direction. A close loss against Clemson as Richardson is hit hard after a gain of five. But if you're a fan of Texas A&M, I think you like what you've seen this year. Does it surprise you at all that Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher grew up in the same part of the country and kind of similar backgrounds and I mean just dedicated hardworking ball coaches it doesn't and you know with both of those programs no shortcuts anywhere we saw with Jimbo at Florida State handoff first down Boise State and a flag on the field at the 30 will check the penalty after another nice game by Madison and this one coming back Holding number 76 offense 10 yard penalty from the previous spot still second down as for Cleveland so we've seen penalties on the left tackle the left guard and the center costly ones at that tonight for Boise and the right guard the only really John Ojuku the right tackle is the only one that hasn't gotten a flag <laughs> and that those are silly penalties we talked about it a moment ago where these these silly flags are setting Boise State back and, and their offensive line has been a great asset to them the last several weeks and they have to play well tonight because right now Utah State will gamble on defense. The Aggies will bring extra pressure. Play action for Rippett. Wants it all. Instead fires short and it's incomplete. We had a receiver breaking open in plus territory. Cameron Haney ample coverage on Butler. On Tipa Nalei again coming from that edge and number 10 sure is a dis disruptive player Roy. He again started his career at TCU and it's interesting Matt Wells the head coach knows his family well he's really they've had eyes on him all the time and so it was kind of a natural spot for him to come to but he has been such an impact player for them. Third down and 15 for the Broncos. Rippin steps up, fires it long, and it's caught in Utah State territory. C.T. Thomas, arguably the best hands with this Boise State program, did drop a pass in preseason camp, and a nice grab there. C.T. Thomas is fun to watch, an explosive player. He gets down the sideline, and Rippin just lets it fly right here. Beats the safety, Ferguson, and 
Just a really nice catch. It's a heck of a throw. Stepping up into the pocket and just ripping the ball. Broncos coming in tonight at 9 and 2 after a gain of 34. Madison motions out, ripping backside pressure. And down he goes. Nolly Eye got there at just the right time. Games. Aggies. School record 10 game winning streak coming into tonight. Boise State has won six in a row. Two of the hottest teams in the country this side of Bama, Clemson, and Notre Dame. And a rare snap for Rippon under center. Stretch. Madison it makes a nice cut into plus territories. We check in once again with Edward Ashoff. Hey yeah, guys, I talked to uh, Boise State head coach Brian Harrison coming out of the half, and he said, look, I don't know how we stop these penalties. I don't have the answer for it, but they've got to stop in the second half. He likes the way his defense is getting after Utah State quarterback Jordan Love. He wants to keep the pressure on them. Offensively, he likes the bounce, but he hated that they did not finish at the end of the first half. Good stuff. 12.49 remaining here in the third. Clock running as Richardson moves in motion. Critical third down here for the Broncos. Now the flats, Madison wide open. It'll shake a little bait. Brought down short of the 35. That'll move the sticks. An impressive drive developing here for Boise State out of the break. Well, pass protection was an issue towards the end of that first half, Roy, for Boise State. So what do they do on third down? They let Madison kind of escape out to the short sideline, and he does not have blocking responsibility. So he's a hot back, and Brett Rippon, of course, knows that, gets the ball right to him for the first down. After a gain of 12, they'll set up the screen to 22 in blue, and he's going to lose two yards. John Trell Rockamore read that one. He had the pick six last week, Tom, as you mentioned in the first half, and now they've moved him in at linebacker from his safety position from a year ago. Andrew Van Buren now checking in for Boise State at running back. Touched it once in the first half. Let's see what they dial up here. He'll get the carry and pick up four. It'll bring up third and long. Quiet start here in Albertson Stadium to begin our third quarter. It was loud early and often in the first two quarters. I thought the crowd would be a little more into it tonight. It's been kind of a quiet crowd. Boise State so far in the night, 6 of 11 on third down. Robert Mahone checking in. And here's Rippin, backside pressure takes off. Rippin will be brought down short of the 25. It'll be fourth down and one, and now decision time for Brian Hurston. Well, and again, Utah State only rushing three, Roy. However, Nalei off the edge, the disruptive force, able to come in, and Boise State here going for it on fourth. Kind of like this call after yep. Hogarth missed that field goal attempt from 33 yards out at the end of the first half. Madison joins Rippon in the backfield. With the handoff. And this one will come down to the spot. Christiansen and Woodward met him right in the hole. I don't know if he got there. It's going to be close. Yeah, it is going to be close. It's. Oh, they did. They short of the line. The referee called it right on the spot without a measurement. Time out on the field. 10.06 remaining here in our third quarter. Utah State football when we come back. ESPN College Football presented by Geico. Boise State with a three-point lead. Don't forget Week 12 Monday Night Football. Big-time matchup. The Houston Texans, who have won their last seven games, take on the Tennessee Titans 
coming in at 5 and 5, 815 Eastern, 515 Pacific. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6, served by Applebee's. Utah State football and a quick toss to Dax Raymond. Will gain seven, brought down by Jones, and here comes the tempo once again. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, Edward Ashoff in a de facto Mountain Division championship game. Aaron Vaughn's sent hard out of bounds, just short of first down yardage. And Roy, a moment ago, Dax Raymond, that was his first catch of the night. He'd have two targets in the first half. Crowd back on its feet. Handoff goes to Thompson, who's going to lose yardage. It'll bring up fourth down. Gahan with the tackle. First time tonight we've called his name, and he's been more of a factor these last couple of weeks. Three and out for the Aggies. Boy, stuffed on third and one. Curtis Weaver stepping up big. And, you know, you got it. Those are the ones you have to convert. If you want to win this game and, and take it to the Mountain West Conference Championship next week, you got to convert on third and one. Interesting start to our third quarter. A low line drive punt. And I believe that went off the back of one of the upbacks for the Aggies. Taylor Heinz did his best to get rid of it. 25-yard punt. And that's one way to get the job done, but it was a close call. Boise State football after this. Well, same team, same stakes. Four years ago, Jay Ajayi here on the blue turf. Rush for a career high, 229 yards and five touchdowns. The Mountain Division Championship at State, Boise State, held serve at home. 50 to 19 was the final score. The J train still running after an incredible performance. Same stakes here tonight. Of course, the winner of this one will claim the Mountain Division Championship and face off with Fresno State in a home game, we might add, next week. Mountain West title contest. Pretty good player, that Ajayi, wasn't he? Yes, he was. You talk about a force. Broncos with a football after Utah State went three and out. Ripping with all kinds of time. Delivers a shot deep down the field. And it's going to be caught by A.J. Richardson. And that'll get the crowd to its feet. A gain of 44. Well, Boise State has taken their shots tonight, and A.J. Richardson again, you know, such a great route runner, Roy, and he has a defender on his back hip. And just no place to go for Aaron Wade. Beaten deep, and credit, again, Brett Rippon, the all-time leading passer of the Mountain West Conference, coming into tonight's game, 13,000 yards. And that is just an impressive throw. And he looked like a quarterback that's thrown for that kind of yardage in his career. And once again, back corner. The pass is incomplete. Boy, that was close for C.T. Thomas. Incomplete pass. Second down. C.T. Thomas had his man beat. And he watched, watched him lay out. And this ball just comes out on impact. You have to control the ball through that contact with the ground and boy that's that's a great effort by him great attempt by Rippon Rippon 17 of 26 for 275 will swing it out Locked down at the 10 is Thomas crowd wanted a face mask they will not get it it'll bring up third down yeah I thought Nolly I got away with a face mask there because See if where that left hand goes. Oh, yeah, coming in. And, oh, just had it by the shoulder pad. Nice take there. Number 10. Butler motions out empty backfield. Broncos need five. Halfway through our third quarter. Rip it with all night to throw. End zone. It was caught. A flag inside the end zone. Monster. 
reeled it in and they're going to rule him out at the three. That was an interesting sequence. It, it sure was. I'm not sure what the flag is Roy but again Utah State only rushing three Rippon knew it. He had all day to throw. Here's Scott Campbell with the call. Number eight went out of bounds came back in bounds was the first to touch a pass illegal touching lost it down at the previous spot fourth down. Well that's the second time in as many weeks Utah State has been the benefactor for an illegal touching call and clearly monster steps out. Yeah, back right. of the end zone back of the end zone he runs out. Sure enough comes out. that's a great call by the referee they have been on top of it tonight. Really all season long. A 27 yard field goal attempt as Utah State. The ruling on the field was legal touching. Number eight went out of his bounds on his own. Came back, caught the pass. Previous play is under further review. A replay official tonight, John Hanson. This will not take very long. Oh. When when you rush three, you, you know the quarterback knows you're just playing the zone. On the field back. has been confirmed. Fourth down. So sure enough, went to the replay booth. They saw Monster step out of the back of the end zone. Rippon came back across that play for not. Now the penalty a week ago saved Utah State from losing at Colorado State as Preston Williams caught what appeared to be game-winning touchdown in the corner. Instead, it was illegal touching. The game ended. And the field goal is good. And our new score, Boise State leads it by six. Well, drama seven days ago in Fort Collins, Utah State rallied late. Aaron Vons catching the go-ahead touchdown from Jordan Love with 43 seconds remaining. But CSU right back down the field. And on third and five with time winding down, Preston Williams appeared to catch the game winner in the end zone before an illegal touching was called to negate the score the game ended and Utah State claimed the five point victory similar call moments ago preventing a touchdown perhaps from Boise State or at least keeping the drive alive Matt Wells got to feel good about those two penalties that have helped his club out they sure did and last week against Colorado State you know that team Utah State never left the field Matt Wells knew it once the hat was thrown that told him that that Preston Williams was out of bounds. Rare return for Scarver tonight. As the Aggies take over. Don't forget your Week 12 NFL Sunday starts right here, 10 a.m. tomorrow with Sunday NFL Countdown. Sam and the guys will have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and they'll have previews of each and every game right up to kickoff. Also on the ESPN app, so you can watch it anywhere. Like you may be watching tonight, the SEC Network in a thriller between Texas A&M and LSU. We just saw something about seven overtimes. The Aggies here in the Mountain West from their own 21. They're going to back them up five after this penalty. The procedure on Utah State. Delay game, number 90. Defense, abrupt movement to cause the offense to fall start. Five yard penalty, still first down. Well, how about that? Turned it around on him, didn't they? Delay game. I don't think I've heard that one before, Roy. I, that's a, on the defense. Yeah. I mean, the NFL has a rule when they enter into that neutral zone, they draw the tackle to move. That was close to a lateral. It'll sail out of bounds. Incomplete. Gerald Bright, the intended target. Rolling on the field. Incomplete forward pass. Second down. And a moment ago in that clip from a week ago, the CSU game, they, Aaron Vons was the key component. And I think they got to get it back to Jordan, to Aaron Vons tonight. Bright on second. Will come up one yard short. Brought down by Curtis Weaver. Third down. Well, they haven't been able to convert on third and short tonight two different times. 
Out of the gun, Love wanted the quick toss, couldn't get there. Vaughn's turns around, makes the catch. And right on cue, Tom Ramsey, Utah State in plus territory after a gain of 24. Well, and that was very similar to the route inside receiver. He just runs a little short corner, and the ball is thrown with precision that time. And Jordan Love finding his go-to guy tonight. Vaughn's six catches on six targets, 94 yards. Matt Wells confirming to us this week he is our best make or miss player. Big play potential for number 11 in white tonight. From the 46, quick strike, love. And Jordan Nathan with the catch. Check that, Devin Tompkins. For a short game. Well, and, and in big games, you have to rely on your go-to players, your star players, and this is really when it what it comes down to. Luff on the run, fires a strike, and that's a tough pass to make, moving in the opposite direction, and there's your guy Aaron Vons once more. Really is a nice job by Jordan Love, extending, going to his left, and just getting his shoulders turned, throwing a really nice ball. Vons makes a nice catch on it. Made that look easy. Deep handoff. Stacked up at the line. No gain. And Utah State now threatening. Approaching five to play in our third quarter. Fresno State awaits tonight's winner in the Mountain West Championship game one week from now. And the Bulldogs will travel on the road regardless of who wins this win this evening. And Roy, Utah State's offensive line doing a great job. Not allowing any sacks. Giving Jordan Love a clean pocket. They've only given up seven sacks the entire year. And Boise State with 36 on the year coming into this game. they got to get a little more pressure on Love. Right in the backfield, Love. Quick strike. And that one will gain a couple. Jordan Happel brought down Nathan. And Boise State brought Canijo off the edge that time. With a blitz, but the ball gets out of Love's hand so fast. Big play trailing by six for the Aggies of Utah State. Looks like the pressure package again by Boise State. Starting to creep up on the line of scrimmage. Play clock at four. Here's Love. Pump fakes. Pressure and down he goes, and the Broncos collapse the pocket. Sam Whitney with a sack. Well, pressure package that time by Boise State. They bring an additional defender, and they get the sack on Love. And just as I was singing the offensive line's praises, they allow a sack. First sack of the season for Whitney. This will be a 50-yard field goal attempt for Dominic Eberly. And he does have the leg for it on the way. No good. Eberly comes up short, and our score remains 20 to 14. 323 to go here in our third quarter in Boise. The college football playoff top 25 ranking show Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Back in Boise, Eberly comes up just short on the 50 yard field goal attempt. And we're talking about a foot or so as that one came in just under the crossbar. So the Broncos take over Tom Ramsey, Edward Ashoff, Roy Philpott here in the Gem State. Broncos have won six in a row. Utah State has won their last ten ball games. And Boise State right now with momentum playing on the blue turf. Incredible home field advantage. Crowd has been in it, especially in the first half. Short gain on first down for the Broncos. Well, and the Broncos have to just keep moving the chains, right? They came into tonight's game wanting that Run the football effectively, keep the chains moving, keep that momentum, as you mentioned a moment ago, Roy, and, and keep the crowd into it, right? 
you got to defend their home turf, and they've been awfully good on the blue. Madison with a nice hole, close to first down yardage. Christy Anson with a stop after a gain of eight. Well, that interior run game has been really good. Madison finding a nice hole, and Ezra Cleveland, the left tackle, I think he's having a, a really special night. Roy, big, big cat, 6'6", 310 pounds, and, and he just dominates people. I was watching film coming into this game. I mean, they'll run him on a tackle pole, and he is so good in space as well. And Brian Harson telling us this week it's going to come down to us being physical on third down. The Broncos were not. And the Aggies are going to force a fourth and short. Christy Anson and Haney now waiting just, on Madison. Yeah, they just run kind of right side zone and they don't get the lead block. And it's great penetration by Utah State. So what do you do if you're Boise State? You, you, you think about going for it here or you punt it away? On your own side of the field, Brian Harson directing traffic, and here comes the punt team. Boy, for a second, you wondered if he was going to roll the dice. Really no reason to. No reason to. Two on the play clock. Skillen has to hurry. They're going to have to burn a timeout. Timeout. Boise State. First of the half. A strange third quarter length. almost in the books here. These two teams still feeling each other out coming out of the halftime break. Well, a big weekend headed your way next week. Playoff implications everywhere. A trio of championship tilts headed your way beginning in the Big 12. Rematch between Texas and OU in the American UCF now without McKenzie Milton. Certainly our thoughts are with him after undergoing knee surgery earlier today. Memphis will be a tough out. And Clemson and Pittsburgh, the Tigers hold on tonight against South Carolina. Pittsburgh's been up and down. Pat Narduzzi's done a nice job, and Pitt defeated Clemson the last time they played two years ago. And they're physical, right? You and I talked about Pitt a couple weeks ago, and, and boy, they, they have a good team. They will give Clemson, I think, a good run. And boy, as you mentioned, McKenzie Milton, our thoughts and prayers are with him. He's had such a spectacular career down at UCF. Devastating knee injury suffered yesterday against USF. To the Knights' credit, they still handled the Bulls. 118 remaining. And Jordan Love back on the field. He's thrown for a couple of scores, also one interception. What do you make of his performance thus far? Well, that, that was a, I fooled you play, and uh, Conejo made a nice one-handed grab there on the pick, but then he threw a nice ball to Jalen Green for the touchdown, and Got another one to Tarver, and, and I just think they have to go back to their playmakers, Roy. Yeah. I, I think Jordan Love has been spectacular at times tonight, but this is when he needs to be really good, right at the end of the game, and they've relied on him all year, and for good reason. It feels like Boise State should be ahead by more than just six points at this juncture. Missed a chip shot, field goal. And some other costly penalties have prevented that from occurring, but the Broncos have driven deep. Utah State territory a couple of times. So an opportunity still here for Utah State. As Maeva is being tended to on the blue turf. Yeah, Maeva's had a rough game. He was somewhat injured on the big punt return by Jordan Nathan earlier in the game in the first half. He was down for a bit. Trainers out to tend to him again and walking it off. But, you know, again, Jordan Love, where he has to be good, is, is, you know, third down. They have to convert because I think every possession now, even in this one score game, as close as it, as it is, if you make a mistake in your own end, you really get Boise State a short field. And, and an opportunity to go up again. So now is the time, put a drive together, get the chains clanging. Love with a pocket, fires his strike. That'll be good enough to move the chains. 
Here comes the quick tempo as Jalen Green makes another reception, the transfer from SC. And I like Jalen Green. He's a physical player, get great body position that time. Love wants to go deep off his back foot. Tarver's down there, makes the grab at the 35, and there's the big play the Aggies have been searching for. That's a gain of 42 yards right in the face of Tyler Horton. Well, Roy, go to your big physical targets, and Green and Tarver are imposing. To the end zone, Green. Blanketed by Avery Williams. Tarver a moment ago working against Tyler Horton, one of the most experienced players for the Broncos, and he's had such a great career, played in 47 games for them. Only four career interceptions, but again, Jordan Love taking control of this game. 15 seconds remaining here in the third, second and 10 for Utah State. Only lost this season for the Aggies on the road in East Lansing way back in week one against Michigan State. Pressure off the edge. Quick toss is incomplete. Taylor Compton was out there. And too much zest on that pass. Well, Taylor Compton just has to make the play. I mean, it's a short sideline throw. Goes right through his hands. And well, you got to come down with that one. Utah State, four of ten tonight on third down. Missed the field goal their last time down here, so it's important. Even if you don't get the first down goal, you got to get a chunk of yards to at least set up your field goal unit. That's exactly what the Aggies were thinking as Thompson is belted crossing the 30. It'll bring up a fourth down and five. <laughs> Man, Curtis Weaver, I mean, hits the ball carrier almost as hard as you can hit someone. Boise State up 2014. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. A one-score game to begin our fourth quarter. Fourth down and six for Utah State. Eberly to attempt a 45-yarder. 0 for 1 tonight on the way. And it's good. And a big kick for Utah State. And it's 10-game winning streak, 20 to 17. Now we showed you the graphic going out to break. Boise State has been just about unbeatable. Holding on to a third quarter lead here at home. 112 consecutive wins as Eberly connects. And in case you're wondering, the team that is closest to those 112 consecutive victories, LSU, second in the nation at 69. So you get Brian That's Harson a lead in the fourth wow. quarter, he's going to cash it in. Yeah, well, and this year Utah State has the different components. That's a big kick by Eberly. He had missed earlier at 50, and to make that one, Roy, on a cold night, there's moisture in the air, there was snow in the area last night, and, it, you know, the ball didn't get up real high, but he drove it, and, you know, it may come down to a kick tonight. Matt Wells said this week, survive and advance. We found a way in Fort Collins. Can they do it again on the road tonight? Taking that one back all the way to the late Jim Valvano at NC State, 1983 in the NCAA tournament. That's one way to operate, Coach. You, you know, I loved what Matt Wells said this week, too, you know, because the game was so close last week with CSU, and it came down to the last play, and he recalled a, a story his grandfather told him when he was growing up, and Grandpa Wells was a golf pro, and he said, Matt, he said, there's a reason why there's a tiny little box on a golf, you, you know, scorecard. Just take your par and move on. But don't think about it. Don't write a paragraph about it. And he was happy to get out of Fort Collins with a win. No doubt about it. Rippon will throw it on first down. Dancing out of bounds is Modster in a gain of 11. Well, that's a nice throw to start a drive on first down by Brent Rippon. He just 
Rips it, a timing route, quick out to Monster. It's out of bounds. Nice timing between quarterback and receiver. Five catches, 81 yards for Monster, who had a Monsters game last week, scoring three times. And that was by design, according to offensive play caller Zach Hill. And as the Broncos won easily in Albuquerque. Well, they just caught New Mexico in a bunch of blitz coverages, and Monster was the receiver that just came wide open. I went back and reviewed that film, and, you know, Zach Hill draws him up pretty well. He does. And, and Monster's a really good route runner, and, and that's why he's been so successful in this offense. It's really it's kind of like Thomas Spurbeck, who was a great possession receiver for the Broncos the last several years. Monster really has stepped into those, those shoes. Broncos have been a pipeline into the NFL. Going all the way back to Dan Hawkins, Dirk Cutter. Chris Peterson, who had a big win yesterday in the Apple Cup. Madison, a power run. Will make it third down and four. Dalton Baker with the tackle, and Madison approaching 100 yards tonight. Yeah, we've had a little adventure the last... Oh, 36 hours going up, doing the Apple Cup, driving through the Idaho wilderness and saw all kinds of deer and elk. Probably at the wrong part of the evening. Not to mention the snow-covered roads. Yeah. Madison, you saw it, 99 yards. A big play here for the Aggies defense. On third down, rip it. Pass will be caught right at the line he needed to gain. That was Thomas. And they're going to give him the first down, I believe. Yeah, his forward momentum was past the sticks. And again, that short sideline out. That's such a timing route. And watch Rip, and the ball comes out immediately. He identifies the coverage. He's got several defenders over there, but he just sticks it in there. Good for the first down. Well, you've talked a lot this year in the games we've called about the timing of the ball exiting the quarterback's hands. And Rippon tonight is playing like a senior signal caller. This season, he's completing close to 70% of his passes, a career high. This time, flings it deep. Monster had a step. And that time, Rippon overshot his intended target. He also got popped. Well, Rippon... He, he got destroyed by Tipa Naliai. Naliai draws the flag, and, and that's going to be targeting as well, Roy. He comes with the crown of the helmet. Roughing the passer with targeting. Number 10, defense. Previous play is under further review. You know, th think about this. If, if it goes through and they say targeting... Naliai has to sit out. If Utah State were to win this game, they host the Mountain West Conference Championship, and that's just a play that for a player's safety has been disavowed, and, and the referees are going to call it every time, and, and that's what's going to happen there. Boy, Rippon really took a shot. A ferocious hit. Naliai. They take one more look at it. Would either miss the first half the Mountain West Conference Championship game or the first half of Utah State's bowl game. So our replay official tonight, John Hansen, that was forcible contact above the shoulders. And that targeting call will be confirmed. So this veteran officiating crew will figure out where the spot should go. And a costly loss for the Aggies defensively. Transfer from TCU's been everywhere tonight. Well, and he's been such an Im impact player for Utah State. Matt Wells saying how much Fua, Leilua, and Tipa Naliai, the two transfers that came in and sat out a year ago, have meant to this defense in particular. But losing one of them really hurts. Three After review, the ruling on the field for targeting is confirmed. Number 10 has been disqualified. Three tackles, a sack, and a stop behind the line of scrimmage as well. Atipa Naliai, and that is a huge loss for the Aggies. It's a blow when you lose your best defensive player, and so you have to make do now with the players you have remaining, and it's really been 
But always next guy up. Not well saying, you know, what we have to do tonight is do our job. And it's a page out of the Belichick playbook, but you got to make plays. And you can't, you cannot err. Broncos from the 38. Play action. Richardson had to spin around to catch it. It is tackled from behind after picking up 11 yards. That'll move the chains. Well, I thought for a moment Cameron Haney, the corner, might jump the route. He comes in, crashing in, and I thought he was going for the ball. Actually, he was just avoiding the block. And Richardson does a nice job of concentration, catching the ball, and then a nice run after catch. Four catches, 77 yards for Richardson. Here's Alex Madison. Spun around, driven down inside the 20. On first down, he'll pick up eight. Gage Ferguson with the stop. And how about Boise State? Brett Rippon's now thrown for over 300 yards. That's the 21st time in his Mountain West Conference career he's achieved that mark. The most in the history of this conference. Madison also over 100 yards. Fifth time that's happened this year. He'll pick up a first down inside the 15 on that touch. And, that, and that's where Boise State is so good. You know, the balance between run and pass, the offensive line play starting to really exert their physicality now onto this Utah State defense. And, you know, Utah State's, they have a, they've, their defense has been on the field a lot of snaps tonight. Boise State with all those yards you mentioned a moment ago, Roy, over 417 total yards. Time of possession, definitely. And Boise State's favored by 10 minutes. Madison with two cuts right in the hole, brought down at the 10. A methodical start to our second half, and now into our fourth quarter. Both of these teams trading jabs. It was 17-14 at halftime. A couple of field goals so far, but the Broncos threatening on this possession. Yeah, Boise State, they can get a first down inside the five-yard line or at the five-yard line. Madison, they'll keep it on the ground, stood up after a gain of two. Nice run stop that time by the Aggies and Chase Christiansen making that play from that inside linebacker position. He had 12 tackles a week ago against the CSU Rams. And, you know, this comes a, this is a pretty important third down here because if they can't get a first down, you expect them to kick a field goal, and then it's still a, a one-score game. They get a touchdown here. It sure makes it difficult for Utah State. 7-14 on third down. Here's Madison, the hammer, spun down. Close to the five, and let's check the spot. Gage Ferguson, an important initial hit there. And it'll be fourth down. Decision time again for Brian Harson. already 10 plays into this possession. Great job by Keith Patterson's defensive unit. They stuffed the run, and Boise State, in knowing Brian Harson and what he likes to do, he's all about getting the win, and championship week to them means you got to put more points on the board. And that's what Brian Harson called it, preparing for this game. The Aggies sense the importance of this play. Timeout. They'll call a timeout as we step aside. A three-point game here in the Mount Division. Nine oh seven remaining back in Boise, Idaho. The play of the game coming up right now. Fourth down and less than a yard to go. Parson electing to go for it once again out of the timeout and Rippon will move under center. Well, and Madison lined up in the bunch formation. Then they split out. They go heavy on the left side. Out of the offset eye. Madison hit hard at the five, but he bounced forward to pick up the yard that he needed. Well, the one constant tonight has been running behind left tackle Ezra Cleveland, and they load up this time with the poundage. They pull the guard around as well. 
Cavedo and Eric Cavedo, he's had himself a nice game too at right guard. They have really dominated the line of scrimmage, those two players. Well, a touchdown on this possession would make it a two score game. Under nine to play. Madison approaching the goal line, spun down about two yards short. Another test for this Utah State defense. Well, you see Brian Harson willing to go for it on fourth down and you know getting that first down Roy you keep that clock running get a fresh set of downs and burn off a little more time off that clock giving Utah State just a little bit less time 13th play of the drive once again here's Madison probing driven backwards no gain on the play it'll be third down and I'll ask you this question Tom is this also four down territory if they can't pick it up here. I think it's a great question Roy. I, I think the pursuit to the football right now Utah State I think you would elect if you don't get into the end zone here. I, I, I think you kick it and you take points because if you come away with zero. Well I tell you what as comfortable as Utah State is you, you know with clock management and going the length of the field scoring and as quick as they can score I would I would put more points on. Rippon will shift into the shotgun. Third down in goal. Rippon wants to throw it. Surveys. End zone. Touchdown. And the Broncos found a way. Garrett Collingham. He's been banged up this year. Scored on a sweep earlier this season. This time he grabs the touchdown on the 14th play of the drive. Nice play design. They roll the pocket. And then Collingham just kind of sits in the end zone and ripping again the veteran presence. And the extra point, obviously no good. 26 17. Extra point is no good. Time out of the field. So they move the pocket. Brett Rippon on the run throws a strike into the end zone. Boise State up 26 17. ESPN College Football is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. A bad moon rising over the city of trees here in the Treasure Valley. 26 to 17 Boise State leading Utah State halfway through our fourth quarter. Winner of this game will match up with Fresno State in the Mountain West Conference Championship game one week from tonight. And they'll also host the Bulldogs, regardless of who wins this matchup. Tom Ramsey, Edward Ashoff, Roy Philpott. Chilly night in Boise, Idaho. From the four, Scarver, leading kick returner in the country, will give Utah State decent field position. And Jordan Love trots back on the field. Week 12 Monday Night Football matchup, a huge one in the AFC South. The first place Texans, led by Deshaun Watson. They won seven in a row, take on the second place Titans, who come in at 5-5. Five and five. That's 8-15 Eastern. Monday Night Football is back on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and also available on the ESPN app. And with a win, the Titans in a much better position. A 3-1 divisional record. Catch up to the Texans, but Houston has been on fire. DeAndre Hopkins and Deshaun Watson, impressive. When injured Aggie, Back at the 18. After that 33 yard return. See if we can see what happened here. Well, sure enough. Players, boy, kickoff returns. I believe that's Dalton Baker. Yeah, Dalton Baker had a great play a week ago versus Colorado State. And he took a big shot there on 
A kickoff return and boy, you know, such a dangerous play in football. Kickoff return, kickoff teams. Timeout on the field as we step aside. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Dalton Baker walking off the field moments ago, a bit woozy. And his wife, Lindsay, plays basketball for the Aggies. As Utah State takes over, and the play whistle dead before it got going. False start, number 52. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Sean Taylor, the right tackle. We'll back him up five. Well, Utah State time. Please reset the game clock. 7-15. 7-1-5. We get it. Needs a score here to keep its championship hopes alive. Well, remember this. Utah State leads the nation in scoring drives under one minute. And that's impressive alone. They've done that 24 times this year. They jumped again. It'll be first down and 20 in the crowd becoming more of a factor. False start, number 87. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Dax and, Raymond. And, and Roy, these are experienced players, you know, moving before the snap. Sean Taylor, experienced right tackle. Dax Raymond, the experienced tight end. And you just put yourself in a little bit of a hole, first and 20. Broncos sensing they have an opportunity to slam the door shut. Love launches one deep into plus territory and it'll be broken up. Well, Green was double covered. Tapped it up in the air a couple of times. Well, it's a really nice defensive look that Boise State gave Utah State and I loved what the safety did there. Tyreek Jones, he went back and had over the top coverage and made a play on a ball. Second and 20. You gotta get a big chunk here. Aaron Vons would be one guy that might get a target. He's in the inside slot. And Utah State. Timeout. Utah State, second of the half. Totally out of sync on this possession. A couple Time of penalties and an incomplete pass. 7.08 left. 26-17, Broncos with the lead. Don't forget Sunday, December 2nd, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff semifinal matchups, including the Capital One Orange Bowl and the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Reese Davis and company will break it all down. Plus, tell you about all the other big bowl games in the final top 25 rankings. Noon Eastern, right here on ESPN and also the ESPN app. Back in Boise, play action for Jordan Love. As he sends it out short, Green makes a nice move, ushered out at the 30, and a big play coming up for the Aggies' championship hopes. Third down and long. Yeah, it's not what you want it to come down to. Third and 17 for sure, Roy. And you know, the one player who provides the matchup is Ron Quavian Tarver, number one, down at the bottom of the screen. Love will look his direction with a pocket, flings it deep. And incomplete. Green, the intended receiver, couldn't catch up to it. And this Boise State defense has been awfully impressive, especially in the second half tonight. Well, they got out of sorts at the beginning of the drive with two false starts and put them back at a first and 20. And then it's just too hard to recover when you get that far behind the chains. And right there, Utah State really out of sorts. This pump becomes very important because and the Boise State return. See if they get a nice return here. Taylor Heights hits it from the 20, and he shakes it. 
Second time tonight that we've seen Hines struggle to get it cleanly off his foot. Well, you win 10 games in a row. Your Utah State, your 7 and 0 in the Mountain West Conference. And it is a shank of all shanks right there. That 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 really puts it behind the eight ball now. A 14-yard punt. That's as good as a turnover if you're a fan of the Broncos. Heinz has been reliable this season. Boise State and Utah State Territory. Madison. Nowhere to run. Lucky to pick up a yard. Madison's been good. Over 125 yards, Roy. And again, just working behind the left side of the Bronco offensive line. I, I can't speak <laughs> enough accolades about Ezra Cleveland, the left tackle. I, I'm just so impressed with him. He has had a phenomenal game. He's had a phenomenal month, too, for the Broncos, putting people on their backs. Aggies need a stop here, Boise State. Trying to wrap it up, perhaps, with a touchdown on this possession is Madison. He brought down after a short gain. It'll be third and long. Christiansen, the tackle. Well, you make a great point about that short punt. It is almost like a turnover because where Boise State gets the ball, you know, across midfield, it, if they're not able to convert here on third and eight, they're able to really punt it away and, and make Utah State go the long field, and, and that's probably what's going to happen. I, I would expect Boise State to be safe with the football here. And the Aggies do have more scores than anybody in the country in less than a minute, so the quick strike ability is there. We haven't seen it tonight. Broncos need eight here. Rippin will buy some time, gets to the edge, and that'll be it. So the Aggies' defense does its job to force a three and out. Well, Brett Rippon is a smart player. And, and, you know, that's, again, a veteran quarterback. Don't, don't throw it down the field. He probably didn't like what he saw and could have stayed in bounds, I guess, and kept that clock running. But, you know, again, clock management becomes imperative here if you're Boise State, 445 and running. Skillet. It's an end over end, and the fair catch made at the 14. Now, coming up next, Sports Center with Michael Eaves and Kevin Connors. Big weekend of college football. Reaction from Jim Harbaugh as Michigan loses once again to Ohio State. To it, Tunga Bailoa. The knee brace is off, and Alabama rolls in the Iron Bowl. Plus, Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler join in on all the fun as well. As we get you ready for championship weekend. Next weekend, here on the ESPN Networks. After a punt of 28, the Aggies need some points, and they need them quickly. Solid night for Jordan Law, but a drop here by Jalen Green. Now, what can Utah State do at this point? Stretch the field, find some kind of offensive rhythm. They are out of sorts. Yeah, and it's really finding the rhythm, Roy. I mean, if you go back to the first series of the game when they whisked down the field, Jordan Love 6-7 of seven on the drive and came away with a touchdown. They've been anything but that since the first series of the game. Looked like the greatest show on turf in that opening possession. Not as much since then. Dangerous pass nearly picked off. Canijo. Who had that interception in the first half. Nearly had another one there. Okay, Cal Conejo really has had a nice game. He had the interception earlier. And, it, you know, again, spectacular play. Great timing by that Boise State defense. Time's running out for the Aggies in their 10-game winning streak. And you really almost have. You're in two-down territory, I believe, here. You're not assured of another possession. And... They're still two scores away. And with only one timeout remaining, pocket collapses, long toss. Tarver has it. He'll be marked about two yards short of the 25-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down, and I'm with you. I think Utah State has to go for it. I think they do. See, he's about a yard short. Kyle 
Tyler Horton, a great job coming up, making the tackle. And what a career he's had here on the blue turf. Yeah. Aggies need this one right here. Inside zone and a first down for Utah State. Well, a second effort, a brilliant play by Darwin Thompson to keep the play alive. He'll stop the clock as the chains move. You, you know, I loved what Andy Avalos, the defensive coordinator for Boise State, told us. I get to that in a moment. Loff wants Tarver at the 35, and he brings it in. Ron Quavy and Tarver with a catch. And a flag on the field. There was contact. Well, they're going to call it back, Roy, because Ron, Qua Ron Quavy and Tarver ended up pushing Tyler Horton off while he made the catch. The fight comes out. Pass interference. Number one, offense. 15 yard penalty. Biggest block. Still first down. So the ball's in the air, and I love that Tarver gets physical here, but. You can't push the defensive back out of the way, and Tyler Horton did get pretty good body position there. Started running with Tarver, and I believe that's uh, Jovan Boknight, the outside receivers coach, talking to Ron Quavy and Tarver. First down and 25, 336 remaining. The Aggies with just one timeout. Fresno State awaits the winner in the Mountain West Conference Championship game next weekend. And here's Love. Wants to go deep. And the far side throw incomplete. Thompson was running free for a moment out there. There is a flag on the field. Holding number 52. Offense. Half basis to the goal. Still first down. Well, I'm sure Matt Wells is sick here when, you know, the flags keep coming out on some of his key players on the right side of the screen, battling Correction. Jabril Frazier. Boise State has elected to decline the penalty. Second down. And, and that's the problem. Jabril Frazier is a great edge rusher. I mean, it puts so much pressure on your tackles. And number eight has had a pretty impressive game. While he's not, hasn't had a ton of tackles, he's been around the ball all night. Out of the gun. He'll set the screen. And a nice play call. We'll pick up a chunk of yards here. And there go the Aggies. An opportunity to get to the end zone. Gerald Bright keeps it alive. Touchdown, Utah State. Touchdown, Aggies. From 83 yards out. And don't go anywhere just yet. It's a brand new ball game. Well, how about that? And it's a slow screen. And boy, what a great call that was by Matt Wells and David Yost. And then the rest, Gerald Bright, just, I mean, that, that is just in, an enormous play. Jordan Happel missed a critical tackle. Everly on for the all important extra point. Flag on the field. And Roy, that missed extra point of Boise State right now looming large. And, and Six. defense, that penalty is declined. Try is good. Boy, a lot of things cooking here. You, you know, we knew we were going to have a close game. We knew this was going to be a battle. I just love the call of screen. And, and really, you know, I'll tell you what comes into question now. Not taking that holding penalty and putting putting them even further back. Although it was going to, it probably wasn't, you know, just a half half the distance to the goal line type penalty. 312 remaining. Yep. Two point game. Yep. Only one timeout left for Utah State. Is it too early for the onside kick? And you think about as well the ramifications of this game. The winner will play in the Mountain West Conference Championship game next weekend. And it will serve as the host school against Fresno State. Utah State's won 10 in a row. Boise State, six straight. Do you go for the onside kick here? Well, before that, before I answer that, Boise State has played Fresno State earlier this year and beat them 24-17. I don't go. I do not kick an onside kick here. I drive it deep. We'll see. 
Matt Wells elects to do. 26 24. Aggies pulled out a miracle win in Fort Collins a week ago. Do they have enough gas left in the tank here? Alexander Madison, another incredible performance. Leapfrogging defenders, reaching the end zone on two occasions. And he has been a workhorse, touching the football over 30 times this evening. He's been so good. 31 carries, 125 yards, two scores. And, you know, just hurdling defenders, as you mentioned, Roy. And, you know, his competitive desire, we talked about that earlier tonight. Tenth career game, over 100-plus yards. He has become, really, I, I think, just such a stalwart player for the Broncos. Broncos need a first down. Madison will gain five. Call it six to make it second and four. Alexander Madison gets six yards. Aggies with just that one timeout left, and that is second a very four. big deal at this late hour. Well, I, I wanted to pay off. I had mentioned Andy Avalos, the defensive coordinator for Boise State. I loved what he said this week because it's really a team mantra to stay in the fight. I mean, Boise State, that's why they're so good on the blue. They're so good at home. I mean, they'll battle you for 60 minutes. And right now, you know what? They have to be really good and get a couple first downs. You got to think it's going to number 22 again. And it does. Straight ahead, first down, Broncos, and then some. Madison off to the races. And brought down inside the 10, and that was the big play Boise State needed right there. Right on cue. He, he has been the man all night. Alex Madison, you know, it's an inside zone, and, you know, he just hits the hole again. Great blocking up front. And Roy then at the end, he has the awareness to stay in bounds. Ferguson brings him down, but he stays in bounds. You think about all the great running backs here at this great institution. Jeremy Nichols mm -hmm. recently, Jay Ajayi. Going back even further, a pipeline of talent into the National Football League. It'll continue with number 22. Less than two to play in a first down carry results in a gain of a couple. Aggie still with that one timeout. Maybe too little, too late. Yeah, it could be. It really kind of wiped out that great 83-yard touchdown of Gerald Bright a moment ago. And that's just, that's the reality of this conference. It's the reality of how quick these teams can score. And give credit Boise State for staying in the fight. Now at one point this season, Broncos were 3-2. and two, Coming off a tough loss to San Diego State. Madison bottled up inside the five. Tom, there was a tough setback on the road in Stillwater, Oklahoma against the Cowboys out of the Big 12. And Utah State will utilize the final timeout. Sitting there at three and two, five games in, a lot of people are wondering, hey, these guys are the defending Mountain West Conference champions. What's going to happen this year? And since then, it's been a bit of a different program. Back to the ground game, back to Madison Rippon doing his thing in his final season here in the City of Trees. And it's more of the same. This team's going to have a great chance, it appears, to win another conference title. Yeah, they're, they're tough. They have a lot of good components to their offense. Alec, Alex Madison, 35 carries, 196 yards, two TDs. We mentioned the great running backs he's followed. And just remember, you know, Ian Johnson, from the big victory over Oklahoma. And that's when Brian Harson was the offensive coordinator for Chris Peterson when he was a head coach. They had Doug Martin. You mentioned Jay Ajayi. And, of course, Jeremy McNichols. We've had the pleasure of working a few of his games in the recent years. And I think Madison is just, again, just such a great player between the tackles. And, you know, there's a nice look at, remember, D.J. Harper, too. He was he was a speedster. Alexander Madison, wow. And and what a great young man. You know, just he had been homeless. Uh, you know, giving back to the community now. I mean, re really just a, a model teammate and a hard worker. 
Utah State out of timeouts, third down and goal, 55 seconds remaining. And Boise State, oh so close to facing Fresno State right here next weekend. Madison, who else? A stutter step towards the goal line, driven backwards, and it'll be stopped just short. And the Broncos will have to run one more play as time winds down. Well, and Roy, that's a crucial down because, boy, not getting in the end zone, you let the time run down, you take time out if you're Brian Harson, and then you kick a field goal. That's, that's what I would do because you sure don't want to let Utah State get the ball and only need three points to win the game. At the same time, we'd still have to go some 70 yards to have that opportunity. And Brian Harson let the clock drift inside of 10 seconds and call timeout. a timeout. Boise State, second and a half, 30 seconds in length. Well, a lot of people interested in what happens here, given the closeness of this contest on multiple fronts. But what's the correct call if you're thinking about this? You said the field goal, you could run around, try to kneel it down, and take all that time off the scoreboard. That wouldn't really be easy. You could try to run it in for a touchdown. Of course, if you attempt the field goal, it could also be blocked. Boy, you throw a couple of scenarios there. Oh, that's good, partner, that you do present a whole array of options there for me. I'll tell you what I do. I'm going to keep it simple. Okay. You, you got me thinking now, though, because I've had, you know, think about this. They didn't make that one extra point. They've had low, low snaps. snaps. I kick the field goal. I put points on the board. I kick a long squib kick, and I'm going to put my defense back on the field. The offense is back on the field. No field goal attempt, and Rippin will move under center. Madison dives across the goal line for the score. And why not? Thirty-seven touches, two hundred yards, three touchdowns. And let the party begin in Boise. They're going back to the Mountain West Conference Championship game. I loved the multiple choice test you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I failed it. I, I, you know, listen, points are points, but that right there, Brian Harson electing to hand the ball to Alex Madison. He hits the 200 yard mark. Boise State goes up again by nine. And they will host Fresno State next week. But Madison, just spectacular tonight. And, you know, good hard running again. The offensive line doing their role. And boy, credit that big offensive line. They've had a, they've had a nice game. I might even give them a game ball. Think about what Brian Harson After told the play us this was week. Over, the sportsmanlike conduct, number 51, defense, 15 yard penalty will be fast on the kickoff. He told us his two star players, Brett Rippon, his senior quarterback, Alex Madison, his junior running back, are playing their best ball here at the end of the season. And we asked him to describe Madison's play in more detail. And he said, you know what, 145 yards two games ago, 146 last week. He's just running harder, he's more physical, and this offensive line is playing at a higher level. And guess what he does tonight? He goes from 145 to 146 now to 200 yards on 37 touches with the three scores as well. Yeah, it's been impressive. I mean, the last four weeks, he had, you know, 514 yards in the last four weeks and to go hit 200 tonight. And then, you know, I think more importantly, Roy, they accomplished what they set out to do, which is they wanted to represent the Mountain Division of the Mountain West Conference and play the West champion Fresno State. They get to host it here. And, you know, what a game that's going to be. Now, Fresno State has been so impressive the last two seasons. It's been rebuilt as the kickoff sails out of bounds after the penalty. Two teams met up just a few weeks back. 
right here in Boise 24 17 was the final same two teams last year in the championship game 17 14 in overtime so these two programs very familiar with each other it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah Jeff Tedford has done a, just a fantastic job at Fresno State of course that's his alma mater he was a great player himself and it, you know he has had an interesting journey but I think him getting back on campus at Fresno, he really has injected a winning culture out there at Fresno State. And, you know, listen, he's, he's familiar with being up here. What will be the final play of the game? The Broncos have done it. Back to the Mountain West Conference Championship game. Boise State defeats the Aggies tonight 33-24. And the Broncos are the Mountain Division champions in the Mountain West. Seven wins in a row for Brian Harson as the 10 game winning streak for Utah State comes to a screeching halt. Brett Rippett passes for over 300 yards. Alexander Madison rushes for 200 and scores three times to lead the charge. 33 to 24 the final score. Stay tuned. Coming up next, Sports Center right here on ESPN. Good night from Boise, Idaho. Brett, senior year, 